Hey all, here OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the J-Chan TX3. This is a retro gaming console that is similar to an Android TV box, but it's been preloaded with thousands of retro emulation games. So this one in particular has a 256 gigabyte SSD loaded with over 90,000 titles from the 90s and early 2000s, spanning consoles that are from SNES, Nintendo, Game Boy, so on and so forth. You can even find a variant with 512 gigabytes built on in for even more games. And I think what's kind of clever about it is really it's repurposing a standard Android TV box. As long as you can plug it into a monitor, you can be up and running. And like other Android TV boxes, of course, you can still use it for other purposes. So you can still switch it over to a regular interface for watching TV shows. It includes two controllers in the box. And again, it's a four gigabytes of built-in RAM, quad-core A55 chipset. So it's not gonna be the most powerful thing in the world but like I said for these retro games it should be more than sufficient so you can get an idea here stations include PSP games Neo Geo games PlayStation games so on and so forth it does have a pretty neat protective carrying case which is well presented made out of this fabric material has a uh, handle that you can use when you are taking it with you on the go and then on the inside we have the top which is just the game station itself it's super compact and again very similar to any other standard Android TV box, but it just has much more capacity inside. Again, 256 or 512 gigabytes. The back features just the HDMI port for connecting it to a monitor, supporting up to 4K. There's also adapter here for power, Ethernet if you don't have Wi-Fi, thumb drive if you want to read back other content directly on it. Pretty standard stuff. Then we have just a bundled free HDMI cable. Here is the remote control, pretty standard for navigating around. And then obviously when you are actually gaming with it, that's why you need to use the controllers. So out of the box, they get you two of these, which are powered by USB. So you would have to plug them onto the various ports on the TV box. There are two of those, in fact. The buttons feel responsive enough and overall not too bad in terms of their responsiveness here on first impressions and otherwise pretty standard stuff. There's just the AC adapter with a built-in switch. Turning it on, it will boot into the gaming interface first, very similar to a handheld retro emulator, models that we've seen there in the past, and has a familiar, attractive UI. One thing I will say though is in this default mode, the actual remote, which is wireless, is not gonna be functional. If you press on it, nothing is actually happening on the box. You have to trigger it using the controller that you plug on in. So this does become a lot more important for you to use. Again, a pretty attractive overall UI here and all the artwork there in the background looking quite good, I have to say, especially when blown up on such a large display compared to what we are typically limited to on a handheld console. Tap on A, it will bring up the side panel that allows us to more quickly switch between the different consoles that it's able to support, categorized alphabetically. If I am then satisfied again, I can tap on B, that will open up the full list along with a screenshot of the game underneath. So you're able to take a quick look at what those titles are. A sample game, this is Crash Bandicoot, and it's actually the version designed for the PSP, and it's actually playing along here just fine. All the controls basically are mapped correctly out of the box, although note that it's not a backlit controller. So in the dark, um, again, you should be able to master the keys. It does feel pretty comfortable and ergonomic, but again, just keep that in mind. Otherwise, again, since it is on a larger display, one thing that you will see is that um, when you are looking at the visuals, they aren't necessarily going to be perhaps quite as crystal clear as, of course, a current-gen console like the latest Xbox or PlayStation, since that supports higher resolution graphics from the game design perspective. On here, it's not necessarily getting super upscaled, um, but it still looks good enough on a larger display. But of course, again, having a little bit of that retro nostalgic vibe going on here as well. So we're just gonna continue to play along. This is actually a, it looks like a racing version of Crash Bandicoot and we are able to then proceed to move around our cart until we hit into the target. And so not too bad in terms of still being a very playable experience, again, because of the limited um, and slightly older titles that you have on board as opposed to uh, newer games. So even for something like this, which doesn't have the most powerful internals, it's still able to drive really without too many issues. Now, one of the reasons why they actually give you a switch type of 
adapter for the power is because when you want to then leave and go back into the main UI, you have to kind of reboot the system. And that's why, again, that built-in adapter has that switch design. So you can then flick it off and on again to turn it back on and go into the main menu. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And other options, including main menu, allow us to further tweak things like the UI of this particular experience, whether you want to change the wallpaper, as well as check and connect onto more network settings, enter your Wi-Fi password, things like that, check for system updates, firmware updates. So pretty simple stuff there. And also check and see how many game pads you are currently uh, connected to the device. Right now we have the Swan One Android gamepad. I can also remap the controls if desired to do different things. But here's some examples from Nintendo. It actually includes quite a few titles from the uh, again, other consoles such as Game & Watch, it will actually pop up into this slightly more limited UI in terms of what you are looking at. Of course, graphics are also a lot more simple as a result, but definitely not bad that you can still play this along. Titles which are from other languages, such as from Japan, and other variants of the games as well. It is a pretty complete catalog, I have to say, and then because you have the ability to emulate these ROMs, you can further download more content that you can find, pop it into the system, and it will read it back just using the micro SD card slot or the thumb drive slot. Case in point, typing in Pokemon, you have all of these ROMs from different regions and uh, variants which are either completed or partially completed for you to find, uh, some which are kind of hackish versions, I would say, of the game, but you can just tell how many variants you can find. So it's a huge catalog and pretty much just by searching would be your best bet, especially if you have something in mind already that you're trying to look for. ES games in general can be a little bit tricky considering sometimes it's a little bit more touch optimized, but nonetheless using the controller should still do just fine. On the top there you can also tell the speed. So right now it's still playing along at pretty much 100%. So we have now split the screen into a different aspect ratio which might look a little bit better. You are able to also save the state of your game so that it will store it into memory. The next time that you reboot it will then leave where you left off on. So that is at least doable. Here's a different game that we're going to try out being Mario. And there we go. Everything here is playing along here as we would expect. Doing a pretty good job. And here's the other option of rebooting from NAND. As alluded to earlier, that will actually toggle into the main Android UI. The next time that you restart the system there using the switch though, it will reboot into the game UI as the preferred initial boot OS. But again, in this particular UI, quite simple, uh, similar to other Android TV boxes, you're able to find and download more content from the Play Store. Mirror casting apps, pretty standard, so you can wirelessly share the screen of your phone and send it over to your TV. And then here is what they call a Alice UI that is really similar to Kodi. So you have the ability to toggle between different settings, such as movies, TV shows, other content that you have stored on the device, or if you're connected to the internet, accessing some of those quick shortcuts, weather widgets at a glance. Overall, the Wi-Fi reception strength also seems to be fair, with minimal lag as you are playing back videos, even up to 1080p resolution. So no real issues there as far as using it to stream back some content. That's more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Jema Chan TX3. Performance really is not bad as long as you aren't expecting to play the latest consoles and it does have a ton of games which are built on in, which indeed are very versatile and addicting if you are someone that enjoys playing back retro games. So this is kind of a clever all-in-one solution if you've been looking for both an Android TV box but it also comes preloaded with thousands of games and this might be one to check out. You can check out more details if interested in the links down below. For now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.